What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. If you're new here, thanks for checking out the video. My name is Jeremy and this is Jeremy's Wild World. Now this is all for today's title. Today's video is going to be rehousing on my absolutely gorgeous Scolopendra Dahani Mount Maripai locality. Now this absolutely stunning specimen I picked up at the British Tarantula Society a couple weeks ago. Now don't worry guys, this video is recorded in advance so it has not been sitting in the tiny little bra plus tub that I bought it in um, for that long. It was only a couple of days and then I decided to rehouse it and make a video for you guys. Now as for my rehousing videos guys, you know that I like to showcase the species, what setup I made for it and then hopefully, fingers crossed, that the rehousing goes smoothly. Now with centipedes if you guys know they can be a little tricky to rehouse. If you've seen my Scolopendra subspinning piece Taraja, I did that live and that almost went pretty wrong. <laughs> but now you guys got to wait and see if this rehousing went smoothly or not. So before we get into today's video, guys, I just want to quickly say that according to my YouTube statistics, a lot of you guys who watch my videos aren't subscribed. So if you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more, click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell down below so you guys don't miss out on future content. Now without further ado, let's start off today's video by showing you the specimen. So to start off today's rehousing video guys, as you can see, I'm going to be just giving you an up close footage of this absolutely gorgeous Scolopendra Tahani. Now typically I wouldn't go for a Tahani just because I already have a grown on pling of the Scolopendra Tahani orange leg. But I noticed this at the cor corner of my eye when I was having a little scan on the table at the BTS. Now this is being recorded the day after, so don't worry, this Tahani hasn't been living in here for too long. It's very temporary. Uh, but yeah, so basically I was having a little look around and I noticed the price. It was like £50 for a Tahani, that's... Hmm, a little bit expensive. Typically, the honeys are about 35 to 40 pounds. So, had a little look see, and lo and behold, this beautiful specimen popped her head out. Now, I'm going to refer her to a female for now uh, because it's currently on sex. You know, if you know centipedes, they are very, very tricky to sex. Um, a little bit different to sexing tarantulas because usually they'll eat their molt completely, so it's quite hard to sex them via molt. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, an absolutely gorgeous centipede uh, with really, really nice uh, greyish blue in between the exoskeleton. And you can see it's a really nice, like, olivey brown colour. And the antennae, beautiful, like, peachy, peachy colour. Uh, red uh, toxic nass, which is the, um, the where, where they inject the venom. And a really, really pretty orange, and it fades into, like, a greenish legs. And the terminal legs, as you can see, quite long as well really really pretty just a really really gorgeous centipede in general like i've never seen a tahani like this before and thanks to my friend ben over at ben's pets he's identified it as a mount meripi or meripi uh locality which is fairly rare um so it's really nice to have a specimen like this and i'm able to share with you on youtube this specimen uh, for all those that were interested in this locality and haven't been able to find one as of yet at uh, least should be able to watch this video and see that I do have one in my collection and they do exist. <laughs> I do like my rare localities of centipedes, as you guys know. I do currently have the Ethrosigmus trignopodus uh, blue ring, the Tanzanian blue ring. I'm also getting my hands on a Mozambique blue leg soon, so I do like my rarer localities. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's a little close up of the centipede. Let me show you the setup and we'll get this beautiful girl rehoused. What I came up with for the design of her enclosure, and let's have a little looky around. So here it is, just right here. As you can see, it's just in one of my old beetle breeding tubs. So I usually like to use these for centipedes as well, just because it gives them a lot of space and I can put quite a fair bit of substrate. Um, I filled it half with a mixture of peat moss, topsoil, and sand. And then, as you can see, I spread some leaf litter around, use some pieces of pork bark for hides. As you can see, give her a bit of option, like a flat one like this. And this is more of a concave piece, so she wants to just curl up in the back and do a little bit of digging. Of course, a water dish and some absolutely gorgeous uh, sphagnum moss. Now, you guys know I picked this up at the BTS as well. Really, really nice quality moss. Absolutely love it. It's just, I love how vibrant green it is. Typically, when you see sphagnum moss, it's like yellow and dead. Um, but the green really looks good. And I uh, put some sand for texture. Of course, Petco texture. <laughs> I love doing that. Um, but yeah, so had some leaf litter and stuff. There's some springtails. I don't know if there's any in the surface right now, but there are springtails in here just to avoid mold growth and everything. Um, but yeah, so this is pretty much the enclosure. I'm really, really excited to get her in here and hopefully she settles in quite nicely. And fingers crossed she'll take a meal soon. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned earlier if I did try to feed her, um, but she didn't take to a live female red runner. So hopefully once she settles in and feels a little bit more comfortable, she'll be willing to eat. Um, so let's get some up close footage of the enclosure and then we'll get her rehoused.
So now moving on to the rehouse part of today's video, guys. You can only hope that this rehousing goes smoothly, because if you do know, centipedes are very, very active species. And hopefully um, she doesn't just go sprinting everywhere. I do have the lid ready on hand in case she does make a bolt for it. I'm just gonna pop it to the side if you hear a little bit of rustling. Um, but yeah, so here she is inside the tub. You can see she is an impressive size Dahani. Excuse the dirty hands, the result of making enclosures and stuff. Um, but yeah, so let's just crack open the tub. I think what I'm just gonna basically do is just pop the tub in like this, just like that. I'm going to uh, have the lid ready. Now I'm just gonna give her a little poke. There we go, just encourage her to start moving a little bit. Come on. There you go. Please go out and not up. Oh, there we go. She's starting to make her way around in the enclosure. I'm just gonna pop the lid. Now she's out. There we go. There we go, just inside there, nice and smooth. Sorry guys, if, uh, the lid was in the way throughout the shot. Um, but yeah, as you can see, she's now in her enclosure. Hefty sized specimen. Um, but yeah, so really, really impressive centipede and I'm super, super happy to be able to have such a rare locality in my collection. Um, and yeah, so, that's the end of today's video guys i'm gonna try and get some up close footage in the next few days and then we'll get into today's outro so that is the end of today's video guys what do you think i'm really really happy with how the enclosure turned out love the look of it it looks really really naturalistic i love the sphagnum moss and how green it is fingers crossed it stays green but most likely what's going to happen is this dahani is going to bury all of it but hopefully it leaves a little bit out and it stays green. Now, really, really beautiful specimen. It has eaten a couple of times, but every time I've tried to feed it, it has gone straight underneath that cork bark and just hid away. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get a feeding clip for you guys right now, but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing it wandering around its enclosure nonetheless. And yeah, so that's the end of today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you would click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell down below so you guys don't miss out on future content. I also really appreciate if you guys for following me on Instagram, Jeremy's Wild World underscore as well as Jeremy's Wild World dot sales. I'm really active on Instagram posting pictures and videos of the animals and inverts I keep when I don't upload on YouTube. So that's all for me today, guys. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.